Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of equivalent fractions, decimals, and percents. This is standard 6.4G in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 23 off the 2018 released STAR test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we have a money problem here. Dolores has $13 that she spent out of the 20 that's in her wallet. And we need to find the decimal that represents the fraction. So we need to make a fraction, and then we're going to turn that into a decimal. Well, let's see how we can first create a fraction. So she spent $13. So let's just put that in our numerator here. So we'll say $13 spent. And our denominator is always going to be the total. right? So let's just go ahead and put $20 total. That's how much money she had. So that's our fraction, $13 over $20. Now to make this a little bit easier, let's just make this 13 twentieths. And the reason I want to make this 13 twentieths is because since we have a 0 0.00 with each. We would have to keep those if there was any type of money in the cents place, but there's not. So let's just drop it and let's just get whole numbers, 13 twentieths. So that's our fraction. She spent 13 twentieths of her money. And so let's see what that decimal is. And obviously we see, we see this 13, right? So that shows up there. If we subtract 13 from 20, we're going to get 7, right? So we already got some options here, even without doing any work, that are probably going to be incorrect answers. If they're as obvious as that, they don't require really any operation, it's probably your first clue that is incorrect. So how do we change a fraction to a decimal? Well, there's two different ways to do it. And we will start with the way that always works, and that is dividing up. Sometimes you can change to a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000, and we will do that second. So let's see what happens when we divide up. We're going to take our 20. That denominator becomes our divisor, and we're going to divide that into 13. So our numerator becomes our dividend. So that's what it means to divide up. Just take the denominator, divide that up into your numerator. So 20 does not go into 13. We knew that. That's why it's going to be a decimal. But what we need here is we need this decimal. You can always add a decimal after a whole number. Make sure you add it up in the quotient bar as well and just add as many zeros as necessary until you are done. We don't really do remainders. Sometimes we'll do repeating if we need to. So that's going to be probably, let's see, 6. And I think that's going to be 6. That's 120. Yeah, that's going to work. So we've got 10 left. Let's add another 0. Let's extend this down. And there we go. That's going to be a little bit easier for us. 20 goes into 100 five times. 5 times 20 is 100. And boom, we have our answer, 0.65 or 65 hundredths. Now, is there another way to do it? Well, I said that sometimes you can go ahead and, without any division, you could just try to find an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000. The reason we like these three denominators is because the tenths, hundredths, and thousandths place are easy places that we can transfer from a fraction to a decimal because that's the three place values after the decimal point. And so if I were to it, divide this by 2, I could do that. So I could divide by 2, right? And that would get me 20 divided by 2. It's going to give me 10, but then this is going to get me 6.5. So 6.5 over 10. So that's going to be a little bit weird, but that does equal 65 hundredths. Probably what I would do is I would actually multiply. Watch this. If we multiply by 5, because I'm wanting to get to a denominator of 100, I multiply this by 5 as well. This is where I need to do my 13 times 5, and 13 times 5 is going to be 65. So 65 hundredths equals 0. 65 or 65 hundredths. So, because that's hundred, then this is the hundredths place. So sometimes you can just find a denominator of 10, 100, 1000, and you can find the answer.